Welcome to the Star City Games Invitational Qualifier. We're into round five now. Uh, we've got Quentin on the left uh, against Ben here. Both guys 4 0 at this point, Boomer? Yeah, they're both 4 0 at this point. Both uh, looking to make a run at top eight, probably within two victories and a draw of top eighting. Uh, Which is not really surprising uh, given. Quentin's sort of uh, pro tour history. Yeah, Quentin's definitely got uh, a very uh, substantial history with the game and uh, still plays it to a very high level. Uh, ben is, you know, he's one of the uh, up and comers, certainly from the Manchester area, and he's uh, looking to put a big sort of landmark on his magic resume at this point and obviously doing well at a tournament like this would be something that's ideal for him unfortunately in this the first game Ben has Mulligan to four so he's in a bit of a uh, he's in a bit of a rough spot already he's playing against someone who he's probably going to consider to be a very good player and he's down to four cards now if you hadn't uh, Mulligan to four what would we be expecting uh, from this kind of matchup? I'd be expecting Ben to stomp Quentin game one to tell you the truth. Um, Why? Quen Quentin's playing a Gilded Lotus control deck and these decks tend to be a little bit vulnerable to just complete and utter rush aggro in game one. Uh, Quentin seems to be a little bit uh, prepared for that in the fact he's got Pillar of Flame and Devil's Play in his deck but the Simple fact is his deck's very mana hungry and I think that a good draw from Ben had really put him under a little bit too much pressure to what's tell you the, the truth. What's the big cards in each of these guys' decks right now? Quentin Martin's deck's based mainly around Gilded Lotus which is a five mana artifact which uh, taps for three mana of any colour. Uh, it looks like we might be seeing it here because he's just taken two off a Shockland and yeah there's Gilded Lotus right there. And another devil's play to uh, kill Ben Heath's Rakdos Cackler there. So what's he going to do with all this mana once he untaps? Cast enormous Sphinx's revelations for one and he's more than likely going to win with Planeswalkers and uh, devil's play potentially. <laughs> Ben's not got a bad draw here for being on four. He's actually got quite a lot of pressure but uh, Quentin just seems to have all the answers uh, which I would expect being sort of three cards up and generally... Uh, being allowed to do what he wants to do. This is an ideal start for Quentin anyway. Uh, drawing with Devil's Play and uh, Pillar of Flow and managing to keep Ben's guys off the board is exactly what he wants. Uh, he just wants to be in a situation where Ben can't be uh, casting his four and five drops when they're going to be lethal. And this is just rubbing salt into the wound a little bit here. He's got uh, Quentin's just cast Tamio and he's tapping down Ben's uh, black red uh, dual land there. The one thing that could be a slight problem for Quentin is if he can't finish fast enough, he might let Ben back into the game. Uh, it tends to be a little bit of a problem with these decks sometimes is that they uh, they end up doing a load of stuff that looks really cool but not actually killing their opponent. And it's, it tends to be a reason why some people do like either the Thragfire deck or like uh, just a more mid-rangey style deck is that they actually do kill their opponent whereas control decks can seem to be in complete control and then just draw a string of lands or something off the top and their opponent's just straight back in the game. First appearance of Jace Architect of Thought on Quentin's side and he's just keeping Ben's mana and creatures completely under control and I think we're going to see Ben just give up at this point. Yeah there we go we're going to move on to game two here with Quentin 1-0 up. Yeah, that would have been tough. Tamiya would have gone up quite 